In case you're finding yourself needing a little more practice with this Arrhenius equation, this video will go through a couple different practice problems. The first one uses experimental measurements. Remember, if you're given a whole bunch of temperatures in Kelvin and a whole bunch of rate constants, you can graph the natural log of the rate constant and one over the temperature. So this is what I've done is I've, I've made this graph here and my equation of my best fit line is what I'm most concerned with. So y equals negative 12,386x plus 30.606. I'm actually going to rewrite that um, on this slide here, but I'm going to write it in the form of ln k equals negative ea over r, this is my slope, times 1 over t, this is the x, plus ln a, that's the b. So the y equals mx plus b, it's that form. I'm going to rewrite my slope equation that I got when I graphed this. y equals negative 1.24 times 10 to the fourth x plus 30.6. I'm just going to call it 30.6, um, rounded to three significant digits there. So everything's in three significant digits. The first thing I want to do is calculate the value of the activation energy. Now I'm going to use both of my m's, you know, the y equals mx plus b. Negative 1.24 times 10 to the fourth equals negative Ea over 8.314 joules per mole K, remember? And the K will end up canceling out because it's multiplied by that T. So really our activation energy, the units, will be in joules per mole. And the activation energy will be positive because I'm multiplying, I have two negatives in that equation there. So they'll end up canceling out and my activation energy will be 1.03 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. So all I did is I set the m's of this slope equation, this y equals mx plus b, I set the m's equal to each other and I solved for the activation energy. I know my r, it's a constant, that's, that's easy. The next thing I want to do is find the frequency factor. So I'm going to set my b's equal to each other. The natural log of a is equal to 30.6, which means that a is equal to e to the power of 30.6, which means that a is equal to 1.96 times 10 to the 13th per second or seconds to the negative first. Remember this, we're going to use the same units for A as we have for our rate constant, the units for our rate constant, which are seconds to the negative one. The next thing I want to do is solve for K at 348 kelvins. So I'm going to predict the rate constant at a different temperature, which means I'm going to plug all of this stuff into that equation and solve for ln K or the natural log of K. So the natural log of k is equal to negative 1.24 times 10 to the fourth times 1 over 348 plus 30.6. Type all of that into my calculator. And I get negative 5.03, which means that k is equal to e to the negative 5.03, which means that k is equal to 6.56 times 10 to the negative third per second. Now, does this make sense? I'm at 348K, which is greater than 338. So that means my number needs to be greater than 2.4 times 10 to the negative third, slightly greater, and it is. So that makes sense with the data. Just make sure it fits in with your data. Now we're going to practice using the two-point equation. So if we have a reaction rate with a rate constant of 0.000122 per second, at 27 degrees Celsius, and uh, we have a rate constant of 0.228 per second at 77 degrees Celsius. What is the activation energy for this reaction? You'll notice the first thing that I did is I converted my degrees Celsius to kelvins. The temperatures have to be in kelvins if I want to use that R value. My K1 and my T1 and my K2 and my T2 are all labeled, so all I'm doing is just plugging and chugging here. The natural log of 0.228 over 0.000122 is equal to the activation energy over R, 8.314, and the units for this are joules per mole K, but I'm going to leave the units out just to make life a little easier. And if, if my units are good when I put my numbers in, then um, it's, it's sometimes much easier if I just leave them, leave the units out. When I say they're good, that means that they're all compatible with each other, so kelvins are used. If I type everything on the right-hand side into my calculator, 
and everything on the left hand side into my calculator to simplify this. I get 7.533 equals EA, my activation energy, over 8.314 times 0 .000476. The 0 .000476, that's what I get when I take 1 over 300 minus 1 over 350. Get that very small number. I'm going to divide both sides by 0 .000476, and I get 15,819 equals the activation energy over 8.314, which means that my activation energy, if I cross multiply there, is 1.32 times 10 to the fifth. And the unit for that is joules per mole. Now the last thing I want to do is use the activation energy, use what I'm circling here to predict the rate constant at 17 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to make my 17 degrees Celsius first. Of course, I want to convert that to kelvins. And I'm going to make that my new T2 and find the K2 that's associated with that. So converting 17 degrees Celsius into kelvins is 290 Kelvin, so that's my T2, and I'm going to find my K2 associated with that. So the natural log of K2, I don't know that K2, is over 0 0.000122. I'm still using my T1 and T2, or T1 and K1 here. The activation energy, what I just figured out, is um, going to be put into this equation because I know that Ea over 8.314 joules per mole K. And then 1 over T1, my T1 is 27 degrees Celsius or 300K, my T2 is 290 kelvins, that's my 17 degrees Celsius. So if I type everything into my calculator that's on the right hand side, the left hand side I'll keep the same for now, point, uh, K2 over 0 .000122 equals, and if I type into my calculator 1.32 times 10 to the fifth divided by 8.314, take that whole thing and multiply that by the difference between 1 over 300 and 1 over 290. I get negative 1.825, and I'm going to take uh, e to the power of both sides, which gets rid of my natural log. So K2 over 0 0.000122 equals e to the power of negative 1.825. And e to the power of negative 1.825 is 0 0.161. I multiply that by 0 0.000122. And for my K2, I get 1.9789. to the negative fifth. The units for that are seconds to the negative one. So just a couple extra practice problems dealing with using data and using the two-point equation. So using the trend line from the data and using the two-point equation.